Hi, in this video, I'm going to be looking at two flexibility or mobility exercises that I've done as an athlete and coach over the years, which I think have been absolutely critical to both my shoulder and elbow health. And these are really, really good exercises. They also tie in very nicely to the work that we did with James Walker at the Sheffield Climbing Physio, who uh, was talking about golfer's elbow. So one of them is really, really important for golfer's elbow, a real solution for me. And the other is around some of the more mobility um, weighted work with Tim Pigger, who's another external physio that we work with. So let's look at the first exercise, which is um, essentially a, an adjusted locust pose. So not lotus with a, a T, uh, locust as in the, I guess it's an insect, um, but it's not exactly like a full locust pose. And what I'm gonna use is a marker pen, first of all, to give you an idea of some of the points that we're trying to make contact with in the body so that you can get the adjustment on this one just right. And on the inside of the elbow, what we're really looking for here is to stretch out this area and really feel a deep stretch right on that area where we kind of get the pain of the golfer's elbow and also a little bit further up here, right into kind of the bottom of the bicep, another really key part of the stretch. And then the contact point that we're gonna be having with the hip on our body when we do this stretch is on the back of the forearm and it's right down this area here, depending on your arm length, hip height, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the two key areas that we're gonna be focusing on on this. Now, this exercise I, would, I have done and I think is appropriate to do almost every day when you're in a period where you're either rehabbing, prehabbing that golfer's elbow. I have found that this works for just a certain portion of the population and I've got a blog post that uh, we'll put a link in the description to that's had, I think, literally hundreds of comments over the years of people saying this was almost an instant solution to me. You know, it took a week or two of doing this and my golf was over, it went almost completely away. So I found this very, very successful for me, but it seems to only work for a certain portion of the population. But regularity and frequency is really important. It's not a strength exercise. There's a level of intensity, but you have to explore the range of movement with this one that I'm gonna show you. And then it seems to work really, really well. So in terms of what I'm trying to achieve on the ground, is I'm gonna show you here stood in front of you, and you have to imagine that almost you're the ground, um, and this is how I'm lying. And then I'm gonna get on the floor and also show you that same exercise. So in terms of where my arms are, in terms of, the position on the floor is that I'm bringing my arms right in so my shoulders are rolling in and forwards and my elbows are coming to either side of my uh, belly button or sort of lining in uh, line with my abdominals right here at the front. So my elbows are quite far in, they're not out to the side of my body. So when I lie on the ground, I'm gonna be lying on top of my arms. And this feels quite an unusual position um, for a lot of climbers, especially if you're quite stiff in your arms, you'll feel a big stretch in your biceps. Um, and it takes a little bit of time of kind of working into the position. So if I get down on the floor now and show you how you get into that position, and then I can show you the exercises that I do for this. Okay, so as another little reminder, what we're looking for is the stretch in this area, and we're looking for contact point on the back of the forearm in this area. And the contact point is gonna be that, that point on the top of your hip bone, so you'll feel a bony protrusion there, and that's where we're trying to get this contact point. So in terms of getting your elbow and arm into the position where you're gonna be doing this stretch is you have to just ease into it. You can't just roll straight into it. So I wouldn't put my arm straight underneath my body and roll on top of my body. So what I'll do is I'm rolling my front here. I bring a hip up so I find space. I bring that arm underneath and I slowly wiggle it in. I find that contact point that we talked about on the back of the forearm and the, uh, the bony point on your hip. Okay, and then I'm gonna roll, and I'm gonna bring the other hand underneath as well. So you have to do a little bit of wiggling around and find your position. And this will feel unusual or uncomfortable when you first try this. If it feels painful, then you're doing the wrong thing, and I wouldn't suggest that this is something to do. It should just feel a little bit unusual, just a, a position you wouldn't have found before. 
And then from there, you want to bring your head down and bring your chin in line so you're not really kind of extending that neck out. Find a nice comfortable position. You obviously can't talk very easily from there, uh, so I'll keep my head up for the, the moment. Um, so from there, when you first learn this position and you're doing your first couple of um, sort of sessions, I think this is a good place just to hold that position, hold it for 20, 30 seconds or so. And then from there, I'll bring my arms out, kneel up and shake them off. I haven't done this exercise for a couple of months now. I can really feel a big stretch right there in my elbow. Um, and at the bottom of my bicep, and it's, it's actually really nice. Um, I forget how good this exercise is. So I'll do that, shake them out, and then I'll come back down again, roll into the position, and you can see that I have to bring the hips up to find that position. And then, again, and just hold that for your 20 or 30 seconds. And that works really well in terms of your first sort of steps into that exercise. I'll show you your progressions now that you're gonna do after a few sessions and you really wanna get a deeper stretch. And these ones I would certainly recommend as not being done initially. You just wanna see how this exercise goes for the first few sessions, see what kind of response you get from it. So the progressions from this is to find exactly the same position again. And then from here, it's progression one, is to bring that leg up and hold that. That will force your hip a little bit harder into the back of your forearm. And I hold that again for 20, 30 seconds. And then I can do the same on the other side. And then my final progression in terms of intensity, you really wanna stretch this deep, is to bring both up. So both feet up holding that position and then back down. And for me, I found that really effective in a sort of total time of tension of somewhere around a minute, a minute to two and a half minutes, depending on how I'm getting into that stretch. For me and the athletes that I've worked with over the years and also from all the comments that I've had on this blog post that I wrote, was that it appears to be a one to two week time frame that you'll see a response on this exercise. So if you're not getting on thing after two weeks or so, and you're not enjoying it and not seeing any benefit whatsoever, it may just not be for you. So for your golfer's elbow adjusted locust stretch, I hope you found that really useful. And as I said earlier on in the video, there's some really good resources to look at for this. So we have a previous video that I'm gonna put a card that you can click on on this screen that you can go to that we recorded with James Walker from the Sheffield Physio uh, group that we work with. And also we have a link to a blog on our website, which is a solution to golfer's elbow. This is one potential solution, remember though. This works for a certain portion of the population and there's lots and lots of other approaches that you can and should look at. So don't think of this as being the only thing to do. It's one of the tools in your kind of box of tricks to approach with this. Hope to see you again soon. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to uh, see these videos come up on your feed and get those notifications and we will see you again very soon.